Hello there, I'm Stefan Dupra, Converse Database Specialist at Oracle. Today I will show you a short demo about JSON Relational Reality Views. JSON Relational Reality View is one of the more than 300 new features of Oracle 23 AI database. It allows developers to develop applications without having to choose between a relational or a document-based model. So let's have a look at how it works. With the JSON relational reality view feature, data will be stored as rows in relational tables, but can be read and written as JSON documents. When the data is written to the database as a JSON document, the database will transparently update the relational model behind the scene. So with a single, single relational model, we can support two data formats, relational and JSON, and multiple data, data API, SQL, REST, SODA, etc. That's what I'm going to illustrate in the following demo. For this demo, I will use the SOI schema. As I want to expose this schema and its objects for REST access using ORDS, Oracle REST Data Services, I need to give some privileges and run some routines to prepare the schema. Typically, I will run the SODA app role to SOI along with regular privileges. And then I will enable the SUI schema for REST access. Then I connect to the schema with SQL Plus, and I enable ORS on the schema, and I delete some privilege mappings. For the rest of the demo, I will use a relational model composed of three tables, customers, orders and order items. Before creating the JSON relational duality view, we need to ensure that the mandatory relational constraints have been created on the relational model. Here you can see I connect to the schema with SQL plus and I enable validate the foreign key constraint between the three tables I'm going to use. Then I'm going to create a relation, uh, JSON relational duality view. You can see the syntax here. Okay, I use the three tables, customers, that I will be able to insert, update, delete through the view, and the orders table, where I won't be able to delete through the view. I can describe the view. You can see I have a single field here, JSON type. I can query the view through SQL. And finally, I will just publish the view for REST access. We can access the view through ORDS, Oracle REST Data Services. Now we can use, of course, REST calls to get the information into the view. For example, with this curl command, I can get the information of the particular customer. Then I'm going to create new data by inserting a document into the view. So the first thing I need to do is to prepare a JSON document that I will use. Here you can see I create a document with a new customer and a couple of orders with their uh, corresponding order items. Then I will use a post method to insert this new document in, into the view. Here the IP is the, the IP of the machine where ORDS is running. Okay. 
and the post will just create a new customer along with the order and order items data. We can query this new data uh, into the relational model. You can see that uh, behind the scene, some new rows were inserted in the relational model. So the new customer, couple of orders and five items. And if we want, we can also get the same data with a get method through the view directly. And this will typically return a JSON document with all the information that we've just created. Observe that the get rest call returns an e tag value along with the data. And we will use this e tag value later on, on the in the demo to update data through the view. Now I'm going to modify data using the view. In this example, I will update the customer's credit limit and email and add a new order with it, its corresponding items. Observe that I use a put method along with the customer ID and I pass the e tag that was read before when we created the customer. We modify both the credit limit and the email value. The existing orders are unchanged. Okay, but I will create a new one with a couple of items. So this is the new order and the new order items. And we can again check the relational data model we uh, select. So you can see the new values for credit limit and email. We have a new order now. And we have two new order items corresponding to the, the new order. So again, the relational model was updated behind the scene. The ETAG value that I have used previously in the put call implements the optimistic locking functionality. As I don't want to overwrite modifications made by another session to avoid lost updates, I use the ETAG. I can get the current value of the tag for a particular customer, either with a select or with a get rest call. Now, if I try to update the document passing a non-current value of the tag, I will get an error. So I run the put with some changes and a non-current value of the attack to simulate that some other session modified the same customer. You get an error just because the attack changed. So the attack I just passed on the put call is not the current one. Okay. It means that uh, the, the data have changed since I read my own ETAG value. And then uh, means that I need to reread the current data before being able to, to update it. Let's have a look at what we have learned in this short demo. So JSON relational duality views are built on top of relational data models. And uh, typically they provide extreme simplicity for developers. Developer can query and modify data through the view 
using JSON documents or directly accessing the, the relational model. And we can also uh, implement uh, REST endpoints on top of this view uh, to be able to access it through uh, get posts or put methods. If we create or update data uh, through the view, the database will automatically maintain the relational data behind the scene. So developer no longer have to worry about inconsistencies between the data presented in the view as a JSON document and the relational data. And last point, the ETAG mechanism leverages optimistic locking and avoid lost updates. And with the ETAG mechanism, we don't have to lock the relational data either. I hope to, you found this demo useful. Thanks for your time.